Hello, everybody. It is Wednesday. Hollywood bet Scottsville we're racing uh, today. So thank you very much. It's 10 o'clock this morning on Wednesday we're doing this. And uh, the latest news coming to you from Daryl Marie, Darren Burrows, myself. For a reminder about our social media activity, if you like, you're welcome to join us on the Wait to Win and uh, WhatsApp uh, handle, uh, uh, Twitter as well. Please do. And we look forward, of course, to the big race day coming up this weekend, the World Sports Betting <laughs> Met. And, of course, they are the sponsors of one of our biggest race days in the country. Interesting. I've got Darren Burrows on the line. Morning, Darren. Let's talk about the first. Michael Miller's uh, African uh, folklore looks pretty hard to beat. It's currently 9 to 10 in the market. I'm not sure if it's going to drift, but does look like uh, a bipod banker. Yes, good morning, Clyde. Um, African folklore, I did like him on debut. I think it was changed from an 800 meter to a 1,000, a course change. So they had to change the distance. I thought uh, a good debut, shifted out under pressure and then straightened out. It was only a length or two separating himself, Errol's legacy and secret winks and plenty of first timers. So I get a bit wary of races like this. Definitely the horse to beat though. Okay, so some hesitation. What do you think, Daryl? Yeah, unfortunately, I missed the start of Darren's preview over there, Clyde. I might be repeating what he said. Uh, the, this horse was meant to run at Scottsville over an 800 meters, and she was rumored unbeatable. The meeting was changed to Gravel, it went to 1,000. But, Clyde, I'm going to be, as someone told us this morning, we have to be blunt on the show. I'm okay. going to be blunt. This horse should have won. The apprentice never changed its stick. He's stick and cost the horse victory. So with stronger handling in the irons, I expect to, co to confirm that form and certainly a bar pot banker. Okay. A bar pot banker, I don't, we can be blunt, but you need to be constructive. Well, he blunt, didn't change the stick. Yes. The horse kept on it's hanging towards but the But it's inside. constructive. You're not being, not, you, it's constructive criticism, yes. which is fine to be blunt, provided it's, uh, we're not nasty people. I can tell you that much, that we're not. Oh, we're not nasty we're not because nasty people, are, people. people are saying uh, they want our banking details or what? So I heard if somebody, some anonymous, somebody wanted to, anonymous wanted to put money in Daryl Marie's account. He wants to remain anonymous for what's that global breeze you took at 16 to 1? Yeah. No, I can't. I can't. You're going off or what's the story? No. I'd love to accept it, but uh, we're not yet to tip for money now. Okay. All right, well, there we go. See, I told you, all good. All right, uh, African folklore, one to beat. This is a bipod for you guys. Let's put that up. First leg, we are bankering number one. So second leg, banker nine, then five and nine, then the fourth leg, one and five, then one, three, four, seven, and banker five at the back. 16 rand, Daryl Marie's bipod. Uh, second race, Lazy Guy's favourite at even money. They've taken this all super fast out, Darren. That's not running anymore. And uh, Lazy Guy, I thought, hard to beat in this race. Uh, Clyde, I can't believe this horse is still a maiden. I mean, go back to his last run at Scottsville, four runs back, third to Aravadicio. Now the first, the second, the fourth, the fifth, the sixth, the tenth, all came out to win. And he was sandwiched between them and he still can't win a maiden. He's having his 25th start in the maidens and I think today is the day. Very interesting. So from a reliability perspective, what does that mean? You can bank him in the PA. But I like the fact that this horse is riding much better. On the half felt, he used to go down to the start very short. But in Durban, um, I've seen he's stretching, which is lovely to see. So I think he's a different horse. And he's certainly a different horse at Scottsville. Uh, go back to that run. His latest start, Red Magician. That was at Gravel. Now, take, take notes. He's a better horse at Scottsville. He beat his biggest rival in Axel Collins. So... I think um, I think he's close to a good thing, and I'll definitely bank him in the pier. All right, may it take it long enough uh, to win. Let's see if it does. Uh, there's been a little bit of money market support. Um, I'm just what having a look for Axel. Like? Even money. Even money. But there's yeah. been. You like the price? I, I think you'll take a power. Of little bit of support for Axel Collins. Not much, but there's someone. Maybe nibbling. future of energy could be his danger because, if I'm not mistaken, they fitted him with a set of blinkers. But Clyde, that that stable. Um, Wade, Wayne Bardenos, have you been taking notes? Are they coming back to form or what's the story? No, I think they're holding their own. Okay. Well, he's certainly disappointed. I've expected more from him. But I would say the danger is number six, future of energy. All right. 
Lazy guy, guys. We're bankering this in the PA. And here's uh, the proof. We'll put it up for you. Banker nine by uh, five and nine by one and five by one, three, four, seven. Banker five later by two, four, five, eight and nine. And then banker the one at the back. It's an 80 Rand PA. Okay, let's get a pick six on our race number three on the card. And uh, hopefully from the Global Breeze money yesterday, you can afford this pick six in terms of a percentage. Darren has worked it out for us. Three to one the field, Darren, wide open from a market perspective. Uh, what do you claim? Uh, yes, Clyde. Royal Oasis having a 25th run in the Maidens. Um, she has to go in, but not part of my first two choices. A majestic rain recently gulded. Never far off the action. He could improve to win a race like this. A lucky dollar has to go in. Cash Caval's open to improvement and Maserati Raw. So two, three, five, eight, and nine will get us through. Okay, those are the runners' first leg. Daryl, uh, of the pick six, quite a few. Are you going wide? Yeah, Claude, uh, I'm not as brave as uh, Darren Burris to tip a pick six daily. You know, that's a very hard bet to get right. Um, but kudos to him. He, he gets it... Uh, gets it right quite often. So if I was playing a pick six card, I'd uh, put in the five and the nine of year. I like the look of number nine, Majestic Rain. Last time out, over the 1400, he moved up dangerously. He looked like he was going to be a factor going through the 100 meter mark. He just faded very, very late, Clyde. Comes back a furlong, he gets gilded, and that form line has been franked. So I'm happy to put him in, and he's going to be in my live wire. Uh, number five, Lucky Dollar. Have a look at the booking of Keegan DeMello. He's ridden Royal Oasis in her two later starts. He's just been touched off on both occasions. He now um, jumps aboard Lucky Dollar, who on his penultimate start, which was a turf effort, um, he must be a player. So we saw Harvey Street frank that form line, and he won extremely well. So for me, I'm going to say nine from five, but like Darren touch on, the race doesn't end there. Can be open. Of course, uh, Majestic Rain finished ahead of that old Grand Looper that Daryl's talk, talking about that one as that aerial display. That's from the Action Time Form line. Let's see what the story is. Two, three, five, eight, nine by three and five by one, two, three, four, seven by five and nine by two, four, six, eight, nine. One, two, three, four, five at the back. And if we use it all at once, we'll get 20% of that big six. Race number four on the card is a 1400, and we've got a jackpot to go with. One Uncle Luckier Place. What price is he? Uncle Luckier Place is, uh, yeah, you're right. You'll double your money. I think you're running to the money, Clyde. Last time I watched him, you know, that was his, uh, that was a run on turf. And you can see, clearly see he improved on his latest form because uh, prior to that he was moderate. And then last time I thought that was a much improved effort on turf. He looked very dangerous. It looked like uh, he was going to fight out the finish and then uh, he just got caught over that final 50. I think the dropping trip will be favourable. He's got a one draw. So I do believe we'll, he'll run into the money. Um, this number five, Clyde, unsolved riddle. I watched his replay. He was very green around the bend and he stayed on extremely well. He's Barfatura out of a Silvano Dam. I think he's going to love up the step to 1400. So it's an additional 200 meters. If it was a mile or further, I think I'd go as, as far as saying he'll take a power beating. I'm just not 100% certain he might not need one more. So I'm going to say it will be four tight between the one and the five. Okay, so they are the two of the top three in the market. Darren, uh, you agree with that assessment? Um, I only went the three and five, Clyde. Unsolved riddle. Uh, stayed on really eye-catching in the closing stages. We've seen that form line franked twice behind Buster Keaton. Um, African Dusk, I heard the puller comments are quite upbeat about his chances. This horse takes time to unwind, and I think the Scottsville circuit with the long run-in is going to suit him down to the ground, and he gets two and a half kilos off his back. So I thought a two-horse race between three and five. If you're playing wider, add the one. Thank you for that. Let's put our bet up for race number four. It is a jackpot. It's the opportunity to get your first jackpot up. And Daryl's gone one and five. Darren does respect three. Then one, three, four, seven. Banker five. And then the field at the back. 
So we get on to the second jackpot race, number five, an opportunity here where Maria Carolina tops the board here, 17 to 10, number three. Second choice, number four, Lucky Miss at 22 to 10, and then you've got five to one and better bar those two. You get some of our information on our Twitter handle, at Waited to Win, and we've got a WhatsApp number as well that you're welcome, more than welcome to engage with us. From that, um, Darren, that Maria Carolina, I mean, that Zinakile uh, line, uh, um, Vulazama came out and won. So that must give the Maria Carolina chances, uh, well, you know, sort of boast those chances a bit. I think she's worth a small bet, Clyde. Uh, this filly, if you look at her last four runs, three of them came on Polly, where she got beat, and one run on turf, where Keegan de Mello rode her to victory, and she won with a double handful. Uh, Keegan's ridden her once for one win, uh, so he gets on well with her. And I think with a handy galloping weight of 53, she'll rate the horse to beat over Lucky Miss, Conchita, and Let's Not Linger. Okay, so you do like her, just so that you know. Number seven is scratched, it's not running here. The combination we've spoken about a number of times, it's formidable. And uh, they deserve the utmost respect. What's your... Yeah, I've got one concern. The, the stable there have been quiet by their high standards, club. I think they lost 20 runners. Zero winners. So Unusual. I'm sure they'll be looking to bounce back of here. Go back to that run on the 19th of August, Clyde. She's a, a, a kilo and a half better off with number one. Let's not linger. But take note of these jockey changes. She goes from, uh, no disrespect to Nicholas Patel, but from mm -hmm. Nicholas Patel to Keegan DeMello. Mm -hmm. And Let's Not Linger goes from Keegan DeMello to an apprentice. Right. So one would expect her to reverse that form with Let's Not Linger. But Let's Not Linger's in cracking form. One draw, uh, I respect her. And then Lucky Miss. Now, I'm sure there's many owners out there that horses have run three seconds in a row and have got heavily penalized. He has a filly three seconds in a row and she drops a pound. So she's very competitive nice to see. that rating. Nice to see. And the case is Blossom came from there. That's correct. Yeah. yeah. And Duncan Hill's table's in good, good form. So, yes, mm -hmm. for me, I'm not willing to separate them. One, three, and four. For me. Keegan Zimela rides 53, yeah. He is. Uh, yeah. Well, he's wasting currently for the weekend. Yeah, Make it of course. Safe. You've got to get down to 51 and 51 a half. 51 and a half. Sure. I want to get down to 141 and a half. I'll be happy. <laughs> right, let's go. What we're doing now, jackpots. Uh, we're going one, two, three, four, seven on Darren's side. And then the second leg, five and nine. But two, four, six, eight and nine. And one, two, three, four, five at the back. Let's get on to the next one now. It's race number six on the card. And uh, in this race, they've got seven to two about the nine, Captain Fontaine. And number five, Pearl of Asia is trading at a decent price, around five to one. Either Captain Fontaine or Pearl of Asia, which one? A tough choice, Clyde, because I originally had Pearl of Asia my first choice and Captain Fontaine my second choice. But I know what kind of ability Captain Fontaine has. And if he comes back to best after a bit of a flat run last time out, yeah. he could rate the horse to beat. But Pearl of Asia, he's tumbled in the ratings. Um, last time out, he was caught deep around the bend. I think he's a better horse than that run. Uh, not going to split numbers five and nine, but uh, there has been talk for the Robbie Hill stable companion passage of power. I heard this morning uh, some whispers, so I don't know if you want to include that into your trifectas. Mm. Well, that's very interesting. It's a stable that you have to respect that there's money for the stable companion. We saw it happen yesterday. One horse got scratched. When was it yesterday? Was it the day before? Durban. Which was? It was also was scratched and Stable Companion won. The reserve runner got in and won. Oh, won. that's right. Uh, when was that? White, Monty owns yes, it. Yes, yes. What Bird race? Watcher. What, we, Bird Watcher. Bird Watcher, that's right. So you, you've got to watch those kind of, you know, watch out for the Stable Companions. You've got respect for Passage of Power then? If there's a little bit of support. Clyde, uh, I'm pulling on his tail, to be quite honest, because I bank at number five, Pearl on, of Asia and all my bets. Uh, just have a look at the best weighted column. He is joint best weighted. But that's off his net rating of 108. It was as high as a uh, 121. Um, Clyde, Darren touched on the fact that he was unlucky in his later starts. He was caught three or four wide. He was working very, very hard to overcome that draw. So I'll be very disappointed if he doesn't reverse the form with African Skyline, coupled with the fact that he's three kilograms better off. He's a bit of a course in distance specialist. 
uh, three from six over the course and distance. We've seen on, him run on extremely strongly from behind, so he can be given a chance. Uh, we, he quick enough from last in the Mercury, the Grade One Mercury. Yeah. So if you want him to add, I'm not sure what you want to back him up with. Uh, a horse that you don't want to leave out your quartet is number four, Wishful Girl Lynn. You can just put a, a line through her last start. She actually comes into this race quite well handicapped, and she'll be doing her best work late. For me. It's a case of inner, inner out cloud, bank of the five, pearl of Asia. Yeah, okay, so you're all in on the five, pearl of Asia over here. Remember, this is an up the straight race. Don't be confused. We are at Scottsville today, so 1,200 metres up the straight. Here it goes. This is what we want to do. Uh, pearl of Asia straight up with Daryl Marie. When we recorded the show this morning at 10 o'clock, this horse was five to one. This is a 1,000 metre sprint race. I'm going to speak to Daryl Marie first and talk to him about... Uh, what we need to do in this event. Michael Roberts does appear to have a quite a strong hand. He's got two of the top three in the market in Warship and Kalulo. Kalulo being number two and Warship being number nine. You think Michael Roberts will win it? Um, you're going to speak to me first. Yeah. Uh, I, I don't have an opinion on this race. I went field. Darren Burris is quite bully, so I'm going to hand over the my team, Clyde. Sorry. Okay. It's a field for you. Yeah, uh, I was like five, Captain Oriana. I know she's two and a half kilograms under sufferance, but she's really down to 69. So I wouldn't read too much into that fact. Maquette, number seven, you can see she's four and a half kilograms better off with Viva Jet on her best form she could feature. Yeah, but uh, this number two, Kalulo, trotted up last time out mm. on the body track. She did get the run of the race, but you know that stable uh, in cracking form currently. Peak run, but I don't know. Do you think okay. uh, Rachel had a, had a choice of here? I'm sure she did. do you think uh, Mace just wanted the weight off Warship? No, I don't know, Clark. I think I think Michael and Rachel are a great team, and and uh, I think Rachel would have chosen something she would, would have preferred. I don't know, Darren, what do you think? Because Daryl's telling me you're keen on something here. What's the story? Well, Clyde, I was very impressed with the way Kalula won last time out. I know it was on the poly, but she's won on the turf and performed well at Scottsville before. I think she's won twice at Scottsville um, over the 1,000 metres in the past. Um, she gets the 2.5 kilos apprentice allowance. Now, what surprises me is Rachel Venneker won on Kalula, and she also won on Warship last time out, and she's opted to ride Warship. Now, Warship is giving Kalula five and a half kilos, and she's a better horse over 1,200 meters. So for that reason, I'm leaning towards Kalula over Warship and Sweet Symphony. Okay. Worried about the weight difference then. All right. Well, here's what we're doing in this particular event race. Number seven, a reminder about Kalulo as from Darren Burrows' aside as the horse to beat. And again, this horse was around 11 to 2 when we recorded this morning. Interesting last race. There are a few in here. Tiny Rivelin, Peter Musket, um, as well as MJ Udendal, Michael Roberts, they, they sort of dominate in the race. They have stables that are in form at the moment. So which one of the top four or five you prefer? I don't have a clear first choice here, Clyde. Um, Mr. Pigal's an interesting runner because all his five wins have been on the poly track. He's in form, but he's never won on turf in 12 starts. Uh, Kamora, the more they raise him in the handicap, the better he gets. So he's obviously a late maturer. Um, Cavalieri's not out of it. And Manhattan Cafe, I would have preferred a mile, but he's not out of it either. So one, two, three, four, and five will get us through. Okay. They're all stables that are in form at the moment, no doubt. Unless uh, Daryl Marie's trainer, Andre Nell, can upset with his choice. Once again, I hope not, because <laughs> I'm on number one, Manhattan Cafe. You know, I've been waiting for him to drop to a seven furlong. Yeah, he cracks a neat draw. It appears as if Tristan has chosen him over Mr. Begol. Clyde, I was very impressed with his latest victory. You know, he hung across the course on that occasion. I think if he kept straight, he would have won easier. Um, he's on the upgrade. Uh, I think the fact that he travels so well in his races, he's going to appreciate coming back in trip. So I've gone in a big way uh, for number one of here, Manhattan Cafe. Healthy respect for Mr. Begol. Um, never disgraces himself he should run another honest race so for me i'm leaning towards the peter musket yard 
Okay. Well, last time Manhattan Cafe got into a fight and beat Boundless Bash a short head. Let's see if it can win a bit easier today. We'll see what happens. Daryl likes it very much. Well, let's put our selections up for last race. Daryl going with Manhattan Cafe. And a reminder about the fixed odds on this particular horse at the time of recording this morning was around 7 to 2.